For the first time in months, the markets are positive and sentiment is good. Bitcoin is up more than 30% from last week and Ethereum is doing even better. In other news, DeFi adoption is going parabolic. Senator Elizabeth Warren has reaffirmed that she definitely doesn't like crypto and one of the world's largest companies is hiring a blockchain expert. We'll tell you which one in just a second. Stick around as we cover it all in detail on this week's Exodus Crypto News. Remember how it seemed like the end of the world when Bitcoin hit $40,000 a few months ago? Well, things have changed and this time hitting it feels pretty good. Even though we're not quite to the point of Lambos and early retirement, $40,000 is still a heck of a lot better than an ugly drop to 20. While the market demand is a big reason for Bitcoin's fast move up, another key factor is the ever popular short squeeze as featured in the famous GME saga. For anyone who doesn't know how a short squeeze works, when traders short an asset, they're betting that the price will go down. If the price goes up, the trader loses money. If the price goes up a lot, the trader loses a lot of money and is forced to exit their short position. Here's the kicker though. To close a short position, the trader has to rebuy the asset, in this case, BTC. So as short sellers buy BTC to close out their positions, the price of Bitcoin goes up. Now that forces even more traders to close their short positions, which drives prices even higher. A short squeeze is a self-perpetuating feedback loop and it's one of the key reasons that Bitcoin went from 30,000 to 40,000 in just five days. Moving on to the number two position, ETH is up more than 40% from last week's lows and unlike BTC, which is mostly moving sideways, the Ethereum price chart is damn near a straight line up. As we mentioned in earlier episodes, EIP 1559 is less than a week away and this is probably one of the key reasons that ETH is outperforming BTC at the moment. It's still too early to say for sure whether this micro bear market is over. However, it sure feels good to finally see some green candles on the crypto charts again. Now speaking of ETH dominance, here's something that's never happened before. According to Coinbase, the six month trading volume for Ethereum was bigger than Bitcoin's. That's a 1,461% increase for ETH versus a 489% increase for BTC. If you think about why Ethereum's trading volume is growing so quickly, it does sort of make sense. Bitcoin is digital gold. It's the type of thing that you buy and hold onto for the long term. Whereas there are a lot more reasons to spend Ethereum namely in DeFi. The decentralized finance movement on Ethereum is flourishing and to get in on the action, well, you have to use ETH to pay for transaction fees. Now the same goes for NFTs, which are often bought and sold with Ethereum. Ethereum is the world's supercomputer and all of this trading volume growth shows that a lot of people are starting to treat it as such. And you can't talk about DeFi on Ethereum without mentioning Uniswap. With approximately 2.5 million users, Uniswap is Ethereum's most popular protocol. Even though 2.5 million people might not sound like a lot, here's what's so crazy about that number. According to Dune Analytics, there are 3 million unique addresses that have have interacted with one of Ethereum's top 24 applications. That means that 83% of all DeFi users have used Uniswap at some point. And a lot of these are new users too. It took a bit less than a year for DeFi to grow from 100 thousand to one million users. Now going from one million to two took six months. And then finally, the move from two million to three million DeFi users took only 78 days. That is parabolic growth. And exciting as it is now, just imagine where we're going to be in two years. Bullishness aside, not everyone is excited about the blockchain revolution. In fact, Senator Elizabeth Warren seems to find cryptocurrency about as appealing as a tuna fish milkshake. <laughs> Among other things, Warren believes that investing in crypto is no better than going to the casino and that crypto enables illicit activity and is a haven for tax dodgers. Now, to be fair, there's a bit of merit to a few of Warren's claims. 
Now, there have been some really high profile scams like BitConnect and a lot of ICO tokens did turn out to be failures. That being said, it seems like Warren focuses on the bad while glossing over the good. Case in point, in her latest speech, Warren claimed, and I quote here, instead of leaving our financial system at the whims of giant banks, crypto puts the system at the whims of some shadowy, faceless group of super coders and miners, which doesn't sound better to me. It's fascinating that Warren would use the words shadowy and faceless to describe crypto when those two words seem like a much better description for the current financial system. For better or worse, crypto is the most transparent monetary system in history. Every single transaction that ever happens is stored forever on the blockchain. Can Warren name a single bank that's even one tenth as transparent? Maybe instead of calling out crypto so much, she could focus more of her energy on fixing an increasingly broken financial system. I mean, banks still use fax machines and sending money from Stockholm to New York takes five days and costs 15%. Fix that first and then let's talk. At any rate, Ryan Sean Adams, the co-host of the Bankless Podcast, probably has the best take. According to Ryan, Elizabeth Warren just made shadowy super coders sound way cooler than any of us ever did. There are two companies that start turning heads when their names cross with crypto, Apple and Amazon. Why? Well, because they're so huge and can literally change the trajectory of crypto adoption on a dime. I mean, it's Satoshi. Amazon has confirmed that they're hiring a digital currency and blockchain expert. The job posting suggests that Amazon is interested in digital currencies and integrating blockchain technology into their platform. Although the Amazon news is bullish for crypto, we do need to clear up a bit of misinformation. Well, a few days ago, there was a story circulating around that an anonymous insider had revealed that Amazon was planning on accepting Bitcoin payments by the end of the year. Amazon Amazon has officially denied that story and the company has stated that they have no plans to start accepting Bitcoin. So, well, that's a bit disappointing, but it is still pretty cool to see that Amazon is interested in blockchain and crypto. We look forward to seeing what the e-commerce giant comes out with in the next year. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you enjoyed this video and would like some more, hit those like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, hold on.